Hello everyone. Today we are going to learn about a very simple concept which is asked in lot of FANG interviews and can help you showcase your proficiency as an analyst or a data scientist. This topic is graphical database. I'm your friend Shivang along with Galium helping you understand what graphical database are and how we use them in daily projects. So this is what we are going to cover in today's video. This small video series will comprise of two parts. This video will focus on understanding graphical database, different components of graphical database, some of the live use cases asked in interviews. Then to have practical hands-on, we'll move towards graphical data processing. In the next video, we will cover a portfolio project which you can showcase in your resume and proxy it for real in industrial projects. Okay, so let's get started. What is a graphical data? Unlike any other data, graphical database stores relationship between different entities. But what is an entity? Any object that can be linked to other object is an entity. For example, LinkedIn users on LinkedIn database could be their entity. A relationship is a relation between these entity and it could be like friendship, subscriber, etc. The graphical database is optimized to store these entities and relationships. And it also helps us navigate easily across these. It also helps us commute the distance between one entity to other. So let's suppose one of your friend's friend on LinkedIn work on a company you want to apply. So you'll require two communication links or two communication hops to reach out to that user. So the longer the distance, the weaker the relationship is. Okay. Now let's discuss some different technical terms we give to components in a graphical database. The first one is node and it is the entity we discussed in the previous section. And in this example, it is Bob and Alice, but also a group called HJS. Hence, it is possible to have different entity types, which is a person and a game club. And that too all in the same graphical database. The second component that's widely used is edges. And these are the relationship that we discussed in the previous section. And it's the relationship between those nodes. For this example, it is membership and friendship or acquaintance for Bob and Alice. Now let's come to the interesting part. The first one is distance. A distance is how many hops you require to reach to a target person. In this example, if A wants to reach out to B, he will require a single hop. Hence, he is very close. But if D wants to reach out to C, he or she might need three hops from D to A, A to B, and finally B to C. This information is highly useful when we perform tasks like fraud detection. So let's suppose we found a fraudster in YouTube ad based on his friends and related accounts by phone number or IP, we can find the distance with other users. If these are some users who are near to this fraudster, we can build a hypothesis that the probability that the nearby connections are also a fraudster is fairly high as compared to the one who are far. We will discuss more about this case in coming section. The second thing is degree. Degree of a node is the number of connections a particular entity have. Hence, if a person has many followers on LinkedIn, probably his degree of connections would be very high. Now, this is used when we need to find an influencer on social media for marketing and sales purpose. But the clever thing would be using both distance and degree to come up with an idea. I will leave it up to you. And probably you can give me comments on how uh, you think that could be possible. The last section here covers the sample use cases, which we have already discussed. So you can pause this video and understand this slide for better clarity. The last section also touch upon how we can use an advanced technique called as graphical clustering to find an apt and ideal influencer for our product. Okay, enough of theory, but now it's time to look how graphical data actually looks like in Python and how we can visualize and perform exploratory data analysis on it. So I'm going to take you through the coding section here, where we're going to see this in Python in a Jupyter Notebook. The first thing we're going to do is load in the packages that we need, which are pandas for data processing and manipulation and network 
x, which we're going to save as nx for our graphical data processing. We're going to read in the nodes which are the individual persons, and we're going to read in the edges or how they are connected to one another. And we'll show you this in one second. So you can see from this, this is our person, and here are the edges, and we can see how each one are connected. We want to rename those columns so they're not just a zero there. So we can do that just by passing in the column name. We rerun that, and you can see that we have the node and the data. Now we can split that particular row up so we can have each one of them as a column and we just expand that. And now you can see that you have your wide format of the converted data that we have. So we can see how each one of those persons are connected. Now we take, the, take this and we melt it so we can get it in a long format and we pass in the column names that we want And now we can see the links between each one of those persons and the adjacent node ID, which is also going to be the most adjacent person. So we can identify those terminal nodes, which is indicating an adjacent node with none. We can use it is in a function to filter that data frame down to them. And we can just save over and reset our index, resulting in the data frame that you see there. So now that we've kind of done the data preprocessing, we can start accessing that network X variable that we save in the beginning and using the graph function there to start working on the data that we have here. So we're going to add the nodes to the graph. So in order to see the main node and the adjacent node, what we're going to have to do is pass in our list of nodes. And you can see we've identified the node ID use the graph function variable, added our node list in. And if we print that out, you can see the individual nodes there. And now we want to add the relationship to those nodes, which is the edges. If we look at the length, we can see there are seven relationships there or seven edges that we can use. So we, the only way we're going to be able to kind of go through each one of these and add those edges is we're going to have to work with a for loop in order to get this. So I'm just constructing the for loop and we're looping through each one of those edges, which is our, our seven. We're using that add edge function and we're adding the relationship to that by looping through each one of them. Once we print this out and build this out, you'll be able to see the main node and the adjacent node next to each one of them. And we're just isolating each one of those so we can print the main node and the adjacent node, pass in that function, and now you can see that we have our relationships there for our main node and adjacent node. Now we can easily graph this out using the draw function from our network X variable. Let's pass in our labels so we can see everything there. Now, this was a very easy way to see your nodes and relationships in a graphical way. I really hope that helps you. You'll be able to find the notebook and materials in the description. Please like, share, and subscribe, and leave any comments that you need in the comment section. Looking forward to hearing what you guys think. Thank you.